Welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. Hello, Beverly Troop, and welcome to the Real Andy of Beverly Hills Show. How are you guys? I hope that you're having a beautiful and amazing day. It is Wednesday, and I want to welcome every single one of you. Happy Hum Day. Tomorrow is 4th of July, so we will be celebrating America's B Day tomorrow, you know. If you are not here, then it's probably just a random Thursday to you, right? But anyways, today is uh, Wednesday. It is summer right now, and we are just like living each day like there is no tomorrow. It is getting, I mean, it's actually hotter here in LA than usual. And a lot of people are complaining, you know, even people from here that it's actually getting a little bit too hot. But I kind of like, I mean, I, I have that feeling because we got a lot of rain at the beginning of the year like i don't know if you knew this but like it literally rained more here in la than it did in seattle and that's like a lot for us like we are used to have 304 in a way i think it's 340 days of sun a year here in la so like only like 20 10, 20 days of, of rain but like this year was like a lot. So I kind of like already was expecting that this summer was going to be like incredibly hot. And we're only in June, like girl, like July and August is like when it gets really, really hot. So like, I'm scared for my life, but like we will, I mean, we will survive. We will cross that bridge when we get there, right? Um, guys, how are you? I have a great, great show for you today. Yesterday I had to do a quite like a quick show. Today we're doing a complete show, okay? Um, if you are new here, welcome to the Beverly Troop, where we spill the tea every single day, no matter where I am, and no matter what I'm doing, I guide you with everything related to pop culture, bravo, and more, all right? So you know what to do. Subscribe, 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 and hit that notification bell, because we are on a race to 40K, okay? So let's get into it. It is for free, all right? Um, okay, guys, so... I have a great show for you today. We're going to be going into the Bravoverse. We're going to be talking about Real Housewife of Orange County. I have some tea about, of course, Real Housewife of New Jersey. We're going to be talking about uh, Brandy Glanville. And we're going to be talking a little bit about the Vanderpump Rules. Then we're going down into the pop culture streets because we need to talk about Miss Taylor Swift and her boyfriend, Travis. And we need to talk about Kylie Jenner as well. And you do not want to go before the end of the show because I have some juicy, juicy tea for you coming from the real housewife of Array Hills and another housewife already calling someone out for being racist. Girl, it's getting juicy, okay? So let's get into it. Bring your tea, bring your coffee or turn on your AC and your ice, uh, iced tea or whatever. Um you know, get cozy and let's talk about this mess. Let's open our portal and go into the Bravo verse. everyone welcome to the bravo verse girl i mean i i don't know i don't know if how you guys are feeling about this but i have been hearing around town you know that the bravo verse is getting to be a little bit messy lately you know i feel like every single show it's going through a a, a, a period that people are just not being quite um happy with it you know, with the shows that are especially that are airing right now. Of course, we know that New Jersey is getting, you know, very toxic, very dark. And we are basically tired of that. Um, Dubai, it's a great show, but like people are not watching it for some reason, you know. And what else do we have? I think we have Below Deck Med now, which has also been like dead. No one is talking about it. So um, kind of like asking like the question, what do you think is going on? with uh, the Bravoverse. I feel, personally, because you know I love Bravo. Like, I live for Bravo, I love Bravo, but I feel that they 
need to reassess what is going on. I feel that they they let you know drama become you know the number one thing of every single show and now it's very hard to live up to that expectation that everything needs to be dramatic all the time you know i'm literally re-watching orange county with my husband because he has not watched orange county we are in season nine i think so right now and um it's funny like back in the day you will get one big drama you know per season but it was not something that it was going every single episode. You know, you will get different storylines. You will get different things going on. And then, like, one big explosion of whatever is going on, right? And it was a little bit different because you will really invest your time into trying to understand every single one of these people. But now, every single house with every single Bravo celebrity, I don't know if they are being pushed by Bravo or if that's what is going on on their minds that it's kind of like they have that need of having to bring some kind of drama on every single episode otherwise otherwise it's not gonna be a good show and I think that's when you know the really uh, toxic environment start happening you know that's what happened with uh, Lisa Rena. that's what's happening with Margaret Josephs right now and uh, other people like around other franchises that they just think that they only need to be creating drama over and over and over. But if you go, for example, to Miami, there is a lot of drama going on, but like Miami right now, it's kind of like what I aspire every single franchise to be, you know? It's still about sisterhood. It's still about, you know, uh, everyone having their own storylines. And it's also about whatever big thing is going on, but you can see that everyone has something to do with absolutely every single one of them, you know? And they're able to move on, you know, the petty drama that we love and also the lifestyle, the excessiveness of money, you know, that we used to love before. Miami had it right now. And to be very honest with you, Dubai has it right now, you know, which is also why it's very surprising to me that the ratings are being so low because it's really, really what Housewife is supposed to be, you know? Now, my theory is also that people are just, you know, hating for hating, you know? I, it's like there is no winning with a lot of fans out there, right? I feel that, you know, people just uh, want things to change, but as soon as they change, everyone is like, oh, no, 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 you know? Or like, People who complain, complain, complain about a change after the change happened, instead of giving that positive support back to Bravo on social media, oh, then they became quiet and then the other haters start hating again. And I think it should be like a two-way street, you know? Like if you are here to hate on someone or to hate on a show, then as soon as the change are made, you should be praising the show. Keep, you know, that train going of, telling the show and telling everyone else how wonderful they are, how amazing they are, you know, but there is a lot of people that only feed on drama, 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 you know, and that's why it becomes so weird. Sometimes I even wish that social media was not a thing when it comes to these shows, you know, which is weird because I know like we live from social media, you know, I live from social media, but like on these shows, especially in places like X, or Twitter, you know, it becomes so toxic and so full of faceless profiles and faceless, you know, people just that are there to hate, hate, hate all the time, no matter what happened, nothing makes them happy, you know? And I think at some point we need to realize, first of all, this is entertainment. Second of all, this is are just reality TV shows, you know, people should not be taking them this serious. You know, and third of all, these people on these reality shows are putting their life out there for us to entertain ourselves or to even judge them somehow, you know. So we should also like just just like we love, you know, to drag the bad things that are happening constantly. We should also be able to like praise whatever when, when they're doing good things, you know. Uh but all of this speech, you know, is coming from that. You know, I have seen so much hate constantly against 
you know, many, many shows. And I get it. They are not perfect. I get, I see all the mistakes that Bravo are doing. Sometimes I'm like, Bravo, call me, you know, let's find more people who really want to make this show successful, you know, instead of whoever is working over there, because I know there has been a lot of mistakes being made, you know, in Atlanta, in Potomac, in New Jersey, you know, like there is a, a lot of things happening that doesn't make any sense uh, most of the time, you know, and I don't even know who are they actually really catering, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to keep uh, supporting them, you know, as much as we can. If we don't have Bravo, we don't have this, you know. And I think that's also something that we need to realize. Uh, you are here watching this video, watching me or watching any other blogger that you watch, you know, or podcaster or whatever, because you love Bravo, you know, and, 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 and you can try to hate it as much as you can, but you are watching the shows, you know, so you are a fan, you are watching the shows, you are a viewer. So if this ceases to exist, what are we going to be talking about then? You know, are we, uh, uh, this is our entertainment. So like, I feel that sometimes the hate should just stop or maybe not being so hateful because girl, I have read some comments that I am surprised how people are so comfortable saying certain things on social media. Like I have been reading some things that I am like a poll and I am Latino. Okay. I, I don't have politically correctness on me. Like I pretty much say whatever I want to say, but sometimes I read some things that I'm like, bitch, like who raised you girl, you know? But anyways, yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there before we start. Okay. Um, so, Let's talk about The Real Housewife of Orange County uh, for a second because the premiere is around the corner. I think it's very needed, something new, because, look, I love New Jersey. You know I, I, I like it, but it, became, it, it has been so toxic that it's kind of, like, not really that enjoyable, you know? But I feel that Orange County is going to change that for a lot of people. Yes, we have, of course, a lot of drama. We already know a lot of the beefs, you know, and feuds that are going to be happening. But I think, I think we need that injection of like, of like something new, you know, so we can like keep going because I have been so tired of talking about New Jersey constantly, mainly because of the toxic fans, you know, maybe, uh, because of the people who are like, yeah, like, oh, if you don't think like me, then I'm, I'm, I'm subscribing. I'm like, girl, can you just like have a, 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 a conversation? But anyways, um, so I feel like, like Orange County, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Now let's talk a little bit about Tamara Judge because, uh, Bravo released the seven first minutes of the season premiere, you know, which I know what they're going to be about. I haven't really watched it because I want to be completely surprised when, you know, the show really starts. I don't know. I'm very, I, Orange County also is one of my favorite shows, you know? So like, I really, really want to see how it's going to go. Um, but of course, you know that a lot of the drama is going to be between Shannon Bedore and Tamara Judge, you know, and their fallout again. Okay. And I feel that Tamara is going to take this opportunity that, you know, Shannon literally put herself on a silver platter for Tamara to destroy her with the DUI, okay? One of the things that I'm loving, um, look, I am not going to be a Tamara Judge hater, but I'm also not going to be any of the other housewives hater because I, for example, I love Shannon Bedore. I really, really love Shannon Bedore, but I also love and respect Tamara Judge for who she is, you know, and what, what role she plays on this housewife uh, world, right? Um, but I believe that, you know, that friendship was never going to be again, was never going to be the same again, you know, after everything that went down with the, the first time that they, you know, the Tres Amigas broke up, they tried to put it back together. And I know there is maybe a lot of love, but also like there is a lot of egos and a lot of things from everyone playing a part on this, you know? These are three very big housewives. Vicky Gumbelson, she thinks that she is on the, the crown of like every single 
franchise. Tamara Judge at this point, her, her ego is also like on the sky because let's be honest, she was brought back to save Orange County after it was completely sinking and she did it, you know. And Shannon Bedore, you can say whatever you want about her, but like she has always been that bridge between comedy and drama that we love on Housewife, you know. So like the three of them to me are actually very important parts. But when you put three people with three big egos together, there is always going to be a fight for who is going to be the number one girl, you know? And I don't think any of them are, are ready to relinquish that uh, position, you know? Um, by Shannon having the DUI, which we have burned her to the ground, you know, we call her out. We told her how stupid she was for, have, for, for you know, doing that. She literally, again, put herself on a silver platter for Tamara Josh to, like, go against her, right? Um, now, I don't know how good it's going to be for Tamara to be using the DUI on her own agenda against Shannon Bedore, you know? Because this is, like, someone's mistake, and, she, and Tamara is going to keep trying and trying and trying to make Shannon, like, look bad all the way like for example someone posted tamara took that incident and ran with it to make it a storyline a true friend will tell shannon this behind cameras and then tell her she needs help and still be there for her now tamara judge is saying stay tuned you haven't seen anything yet i did tell her in private right after the dui that this was a wake-up call and she needed help but she turned on me because she didn't like what I have to say. Now, to me, it's a little bit weird because we know that there is a whole drama happening uh, between Vicky Gumbelson and Shannon Bedore and Tamara Judge. You know, they have been very outspoken about it. Uh, according to Vicky and Shannon, it all came from the fact that, you know, Tamara quit the, the Tres Amigas show without saying absolutely anything. You know, and they are very upset about it. And that's why they continue, like, doing their own thing, you know. But Tamara retaliate by saying, no, the truth is I actually caught them talking shit about me behind my back. And I had it, you know, and I decided to just leave. So I feel that this has nothing to do with the DUI. Again, I do believe that Tamara is going to be using the DUI as an excuse to attack Shannon constantly, right? Uh, at this point, I I don't know if I'm going to continue like rooting for the Tres Amigas. At this point, I'm just like, look, pick a lane. Are you going to be enemies or are you going to be friends? You know, and go hard at it. Because this like back and forward and, and like creating gossip and she said, she said, she said, she said, like, it's just going to be exhausting at some point, you know? One thing that I do have to say about Shannon Bedore is that she actually took accountability about every single thing that she did during that uh, DUI, you know, immediately. Yeah, and you can see that she's going to be regretting every single thing that happened, you know. And uh, when, ha when it happened, she didn't wait for the cameras, you know, to, like, take any accountability. After, immediately after it happened, she went out there, she paid for everything, she did what she needed to do, you know. Um, so I don't know, you know, I, I, I found it, I'm like very much in the middle. I'm going to try to treat this season of Orange County um, with some care. Not that I'm not going to be giving my opinion because, bitch, you know that I will always be giving you my opinion when it comes to, to every single of these shows. But I do care about every single one of these girls. Maybe not Gina so much, but I don't hate her, you know, but like, I'm just, you know what I mean? So. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think on the comments below, all right? Okay, so let's move on, of course, because we need to be a little bit toxic and talk about the real housewife of New Jersey. Of course, it's in, air, uh, in the air. Okay, It's on air. Well, it's airing. Latino moment, guys. You know what I mean. We are watching it right now. And, you know, there are people trying to call out Jennifer Aiding, you know, be, like on this whole Danielle Cabral situation. And I just don't get it because 
It is one thing if you are just a viewer. I will understand if you have an opinion just as a viewer that doesn't have any idea what is happening behind the scenes. But a lot of people, especially on social media, we know that Daniel Cabral has not been a trustworthy person for a very long time. You know, she has been a accused over and over and over of not paying people, not paying hairdresser, not paying hair glam squad, not like being shitty to a lot of people, not being a good person to her staff, you know, or anyone around her. And this has been going on for like months and months and months, all the way to from BravoCon, you know? Um, so now... They want to paint this image like Jennifer Aiding is trying to come for, for uh, Daniel Cabral. And I don't think that's actually exactly what is going on. Jennifer Aiding, yes, she is calling out Danielle. You know, she is calling her out because what she did was shitty. You know, what she did to her hairdresser, her extension girl, her, the, the charity war, you know, the, the charity thing, you know. Yeah, it is shitty. Mind you, I'm so sorry, but Jennifer Aiding never, ever said that Danielle stole money from the charity. That was never said, and honestly, that was not even implied. She said, you pay yourself from the charity money. You pay for everything, and you pay yourself for your time, which Danielle said it herself. She did say it herself, you know? And the only thing that she did, that she said, and Jennifer Fessler, you know, doubled down on that, is like, that's a little bit icky, okay? It's not that you cannot do it. It's not illegal to do it. But I'm so sorry. It is weird that if you are doing something for charity, that you will take the money that you are, you know, raising and pay yourself for your time when you are supposed to be doing that for charity. Okay, and Jennifer said it like that. When I do it, I don't pay myself. You know, I go, I do these things for free. Yes, maybe it's because Jennifer Aiding is rich and she has all the money in the world. You know, and she doesn't have to care for paying herself. I don't know five or ten thousand dollars for doing an appearance. Maybe that's right. Maybe Daniel Cabral. You know, she doesn't have the means and doesn't have the money. But in the charity world. If you are doing something for charity, yes, it's gonna look icky. And that was what Jennifer was saying, you know. I think it was weird that she was paying herself and that she will say, I pay for my time. And now Danielle wants to change the narrative and wants to convince the world that Jennifer was saying, oh, she's trying, she, she told, she said that she was, uh, that I was stealing from the charity. You were not stealing from the charity because we all know it. It is not illegal for you to pay yourself, you know, from the charity money. But it is weird because you are raising money for charity. Okay. You already have to pay everything, which, okay, it's also weird. I don't see people who are in the charity world, you know, like paying everything, but let's say it happens, you know, Okay, and now you also have to want to pay yourself. That is weird, okay? Now, people, who, um, some, you know, bloggers out there are trying to call her out. And Jennifer came back and said, uh, oh, no, this is not true. You are extremely mistaken. It's a long story that got shoved up. But when you hear the whole thing, you will see. You can ask anyone who knows me. Money is not my driving force. I have that already. You know, and also uh, they are trying to say like, oh, uh, Jennifer Aiding, you know, she does things for money. I don't think Jennifer Aiding has to do absolutely anything for money, you know, because Jennifer Aiding has been probably one of the few housewives in the housewife franchise who has never been accused of not having money, you know, or having money issues or something like that. It is what it is, right? So I do have to come here and defend my girl, Jennifer, because, you know, this, and I know a lot of this is coming from Teresa's uh, haters, you know, because they hate Teresa so much that, that then they want to hate on Jennifer as well. And that is like so dumb, to be honest. Um, I, I, and again, 
Daniel does has a reputation. I'm so sorry. Go look into the tea, tea that we have been talking for months. She has a reputation. She's like a little Joe Gorga. She's the female Joe Gorga. You know, she just doesn't want to pay anyone. She just wants everything for free. Look at the real reasons why she was not talking to her brother, okay? That's the only thing that I have to say. All right, guys. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Now, let's talk a little bit about Miss Blandy, uh, Brandy Glanville. Because a girl, I mean, the desperation on this girl. She is now saying that she might sue Bravo. After she went on and tried to like go after Andy for sexual harassment, you know, the gayest man on TV. <laughs> I feel that she is just trying to get coins from wherever she can get it. At this point, I just look, Brandy put herself on this situation. Okay. I'm so sorry. Brandy put herself on this situation. Now, this is what she has to say on a couple uh, posts. The first one says, I have been left no choice but to sue Bravo. I have receipts for days. This stress has ruined my health. I have uncontrollable stress induced angioedema and I haven't worked for a year. I am, I'm half, uh, for a year and a half. I'm too depressed to do my podcast and too swollen for cameos or OnlyFans. I'm being used as a fall guy. Another one, she says, I read that I was sent punishment for the false allegations in Morocco. Um, I was fired, removed from the cast, held hostage in a hotel in Morocco for days. The cast rallied rally on my side and didn't want to contribute without me, to continue without me, because of the bad, untrue press, I have been canceled from all jobs. Uh, I think when it comes to Brandy, I think I have said this before, but I feel that her own thirstiness for being famous really put her in this position. You know? Um, she came to Bravo on several occasions, you know, begging them for a job, begging them to, to take her back, begging them and saying that she will do whatever they want them to do, you know? And I think that's, you know, the main reason why, why she did come back to uh, Real House of Beverly Hills when the whole Denise Richard situation happened, you know, because she told production that she had, a, you know, an affair with Denise Richard and that she was ready to spill it out on camera. OK, now she didn't get paid enough. She didn't do the thing, you know, that's your own problem, girl. You know, you should know better. I think at this point, especially when you are a seasoned reality TV star, you know how much to give and how to play with the networks because the networks, and this is not only Bravo, I think every single network in the world, they're always going to look only for themselves. You know, if you come here and instead of saying, hey, I have this huge piece of tea that I could, like, I will give you ratings for days, but you have to pay me $1 million. You will make them think, right? And maybe they will do it, maybe they won't. But if you come here and say, I have this big piece of tea, but, I know, and I'm going to give it to you for free, please, 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 just, just make, put me in front of the camera, put me in front of the camera. What do you think the network is going to do, you know? Now, when it comes to Mar 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 Marrakesh, I don't know, my, my thong is everywhere right now. When it comes to Marrakesh, I told you guys the tea, you know. Caroline Manso didn't want to talk about Dina Manso, okay. And the producers told Brandy, hey, I mean, if you want to come back, come back, you know. Just please make sure to ask Caroline Manso about this. It's up to Brandy to take that bait or not, you know, to see if she's going to like do this or not. At the end of the day, to me, of course, the big evil on that specific situation was Caroline Manso because she's the one who took something and make it in something even bigger just so the show did not air with all of the bullshit that she talked on that show. Allegedly. 
you know? But at the end of the day, it, it's this. The problem is Brandy. The problem has always been Brandy when it comes to this, you know, because she is too thirsty and she let this, this, you know, I don't know, necessity of being famous take over her. It has always been like this, right? Look, what is she going to sue Bravo for? Okay, I mean, if it's going to be the same bullshit as, you know, she did with Andy Cohen or the same bullshit that Leah McSweeney tried to do, it's just not going to work out because at the end of the day, you are your own person. You are putting yourself in that situation and you need to be very dumb if you are letting, you know, the show or the network taking advantage of you. Okay, I will get it if this is your first season and you have never been on reality TV. It, of course, you know, you were dumb. You know how many people are here being like, I got paid, I don't know, $5,000 for my first season. Okay, you know, it happens. You know, it, you were, you know, dumb. But when you have been on these shows for years and years and you're still, you know, going again and again and again, that's your own, that's your own thing, you know. That's because you are obsessed with fame, you are obsessed with being in front of the camera. You put yourself in this situation. The stress, I mean, what what else can you say? Like, she didn't do it. It was already proved, you know, that, that Brandy Glanville did not sexually harass Caroline Manso. So, I don't know, you know? I think, and it's such a shame because Brandy has the potential to be great. But, Thirstiness is any reality TV star worst enemy because it makes them do shit that they should not be doing. You know, you need to be smart when you go on a reality TV show because this thing is a monster. Okay. And you can make shit happen. Look how many housewives have done amazing things with their platform. You know, amazing things. But at the same time, you can be, you know, the joke. It's up to you. It's really up to you. And you don't have anyone else to blame but yourself. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Now, let's talk a little bit about a Vanderpump Rules. Girl, this is another one that honestly, <laughs> Raquel Levis, uh, a new letter, you know, it's out there, of how she is describing her experience. Um, because, you know, Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox are both fighting, are both saying, like, um, girl, you're crazy, you know, uh, on this whole revenge porn or whatever lawsuit that she's trying to do. And this letter is insane. Just when you thought that she could not take any more accountability, she kept finding new ways. She literally wants to be like, I was just another victim, you know, like I didn't, I mean, she is this close to say like, I didn't know that he was in a relationship. You know what I mean? Like, girl, you were there. You had the affair. You were sleeping with Tom Sandoval for months. Now in this new letter, she kind of like wants to like put out there that Tom Sandoval isolate her and like basically groom her, you know, and all of this. Girl, come on. Like, I'm so sorry, but like, when is going to be enough? When is she going to learn that she needs to take accountability for all the shit that she put Ariana um, under? You know what I mean? Look, I'm going to read you this. I can. You know, when it comes with Raquel, it's like, girl. After breaking off my engagement to James Kennedy, I became increasingly isolated. Began to confide in Tom Sandoval. Became increasingly close. Levy said that she began to rely on Sandoval for emotional support, while he in turn began to confide in me about the dire state of his relationship with uh, Ariana. Describing it as a business partnership and casting it and as foregone. I view Sandoval as a close confidant and friend and our relationship as platonic. It became increasingly clear, however, that Sandoval had different intentions. 
By the summer of 2022, Sandoval had worn down my defenses, start slipping together in August, and continue doing so through the early months of 2023. The secret couple regularly communicated through FaceTime, sometimes sexually, she said, noting that these conversations were confidential. Levis characterized the calls as private communications reflecting the clandestine affair. However, recordings were alleged, uh, allegedly captured around February of 2023 while she was on a private residence. Sandoval never asked my permission to record them, and I was not aware he was doing so. Had he asked, I would have said no. If I had known he had done so anyways, I would have been furious and demand he delete them. Under no circumstances will I have consent to being recorded. Given Sandoval's operant practice of secretly recording me, I have every reason to believe that he captured additional compromising videos and or images of me. Uh, after Ariana discovered the video, she sent Levis three text messages. The first two were video recordings and the third read, you are dead to me. I reacted to Ariana messages with shock and alarm. Uh, she, while admitting that she was not surprised at her coaster angers, she said the fact that Maddox now had access to the explicit videos made an already difficult situation decidedly worse. I'm sorry, I just... It is just not... It's not just that Ariana had discovered the recordings and confront me about their contents. Is that where all that happened? Maddox will not have been named in this lawsuit. Levis wrote that she had every reason to believe that Ariana showed the recordings to others, describing the cast members as bent on revenge. What I do know is that I was utterly terrified of Ariana's intentions and her actions. As acknowledged by her, caused me extreme emotional distress. Mm. No, no, no. Okay? Like... No, I'm so sorry. Like this is, I, I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm literally being crazy here. How is this like? Shut up! At this point, what? It, like the whole thing, she's not even, you know, being a little bit regretful. She doesn't care about anything. And the whole letter, it's kind of like a letter to like, please, I'm just a victim here, you know. Those two are so bad. How dare she send me a message with the video recordings? Like, how, like, I was so threatened by her. Bitch, shut up. No, I mean, this is so wrong on so many levels. And to me, the fact that she just keeps going and going and going, she will, I mean, at least for me, you know, a lot of people have different opinions, but at least for me, she will never convince me that she was a victim in this situation. Okay, she she knew what she was doing. She is she was not fifteen. She was not eighteen. Okay, she is a grown as woman. She know that Tom Sandoval was having a full on relationship with Ariana Maddox. No matter what Tom told her, you know she knew. She made the decision consciously. Over and over and over again for months to sleep with Tom Sandoval. Okay? Again, Tom Sandoval is a piece of shit. Tom Sandoval deserved to be fired, maybe, from the show. Although, you know, some people will say having an affair are not reasons for you to be fired. But, like, let's say, you know, for the sake of the argument, like Tom Sandoval, he can also leave, right? But you don't see Tom Sandoval out here trying to make himself, you know, a victim over the affair. You know what I mean? But Raquel, by suing Ariana, I feel that this is so disgusting. Second of all, she's acting like she is Paris Hilton. She's acting like she is Kim Kardashian. She's acting like this uh, sex tape is everywhere and that is being, you know, distributed and like we all have access and we all have watched that video when that never happened. 
this is all this is like a, i feel that her ego got so hurt on all of this and she just want someone to tell her baby girl you are a victim Yes, you are. You are a victim. When no one is going to tell you that because you are not a victim. Okay? You knew what you were doing. This this didn't happen once. This happened over and over and over for months. While Ariana was burying her grandmother, you were jumping on Tom Sandoval's D. So don't come here and keep doing this. I mean, the nerve. What face does she has that she could like put something like this out there? Both of them, I, I do believe Raquel and Tom, you know, they deserve each other, you know. But this is even worse, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. To me, I mean, what Raquel is doing is even worse. At least Tom Sandoval is out there at the reunion, fake crying, asking for forgiveness, you know. Yes, maybe it's fake, maybe, but at least he's putting his face out there, you know, and he's, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, you know? But, like, this girl, no. And going after Ariana over and over and over, I wish there was a way for Ariana to, like, contrasue this girl, honestly. Anyways, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. All right, guys, that's it from the Bravoverse, but don't go anywhere because now it is time to go down into the pop culture streets. All right, guys, welcome to the pop culture streets. And we're going to be talking about a couple items over here. So let's start by talking about uh, Taylor Swift boyfriend, uh, Travis Kelsey. Okay. Uh, he recently made an appearance on one of, you know, Taylor Swift um, concerts on stage. And he's kind of like opening up about the whole thing. But the real tea is that he is getting a little bit of backlash from you know the fans and people out there because they don't like i guess people don't like that he likes the attention that he's getting so much okay so let's go through the whole thing first of all let's talk about you know his reaction uh to the whole thing so he told his brother on this week episode of new heights his podcast you know that at first he wanted to ride a bike during the 1989 portion of one of the pop stars era store show but after some concerns over the big football player accidentally running into other backup dancers taylor suggests a pivot a part of the torture poets department section of her set the two put the plan in place just prior to her shows in london last month and executed all perfectly on june 23rd as you have seen by now, just before Taylor Swift crone, I can do I can do it with a broken heart. Kelsey helped bring the singer back to life, all while decked out in a tuxedo. He went on to tell Jason the experience was awesome. He says it was a blast, man. I had so much fun. It was an honor being on stage. Travis Todd did say. No, no, Travis Dodd did say he had a little bit of nerves while in front of the pack stadium with his boo, explaining he was worried sick about dropping Taylor as he carried her to the stage sofa. Listen, he told Jason, the one thing I told myself is do not drop the baby. Do not drop this. Do not drop Taylor on your way over to this damn couch. But Kelsey made it through it all on scarred. And Jason couldn't have been more proud, telling his little bro, you guys killed it. Well, the thing is that that's all perfect, you know. And of course, Taylor Swift fans loved the whole thing. But now, if you go online, there is a lot of people asking questions, you know. Since they got together, uh, Travis has popularity has increased a lot and you know he has not been shy about his desires to not only be part of this whole sport things that he has going on 
but also jump into the entertainment industry. You know, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, at some point, people saying that he wants to explore like acting, you know, and like uh, modeling and like other things, you know, into uh, this world. And of course, there are people that are worried about Taylor thinking, what if he's just using Taylor Swift for clout? What if he's just using Taylor Swift for connections and once he gets to be big enough he will be like okay bye you know um people are leaving comments left and right kind of like they wanted to be mr swift you know and like just stay there pretty in the corner and let you know taylor do you know her whole thing uh forever and ever look i have to tell you i I don't think that that is the case. You know, I actually have seen like seen them to be like very much in love all the time, you know? And I believe that, look, if you're going to go out with a super mega superstar, well, it, there is nothing wrong to take an advantage of the perks of going out with a superstar, you know? Especially if you have dreams on your own. There is nothing wrong with wanting to explore other options, especially because in sports, it's not like you're going to be there forever and ever, right? So if he wants to be an actor or a model or whatever, you know, why do, why not explore those things? You know, he's going to meet a lot of people through Taylor Swift, you know? Well, take advantage of that, especially someone like Taylor Swift who, like, has changed so many times. <laughs> like, I will be like, girl, I will be like, okay, I need everyone's numbers right now, you know? You never know, you never know, you never know. No, I'm just kidding. But, like, I feel that they love each other. I feel that they are perfect for each other. But, like, girl, if he wants to do things, let him do things as well. That doesn't mean that he loves Taylor less. I also don't think that it's, like, necessarily good that he just needs to stay on a corner, you know, all the time, you know. He also has dreams of, you know, himself. And no matter what happens, Taylor will always be right here, you know. He will always be down here. Like, that's just the way it's going to be. I mean, it will, it will require... This guy will have to be, like, the next Meryl Streep to get to the same t level as Taylor Swift. You know, he will need to, like, win an Oscar, you know, to be on the same level as, as Taylor Swift. So, like, if this is... It's always going to be like this. Let him do whatever he wants to do, girl. You know, I don't... Like, I don't think it's, like, a big thing, right? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think on the comments below. All right, now let's talk a little bit about Miss Kylie Jenner because, you know, she has been very quiet about her relationship with Timothy Chalamet. And um, people have always been asking questions, you know, are they together? Are they not together? You know, what is going on? Well, they apparently they are together. They're still together, you know, and they, they were seen the other day, you know, and kind of like in a little date, but the thing is, like, they are really, really keeping their relationship away from the cameras. Now, I feel that for someone like Timothy, this is the best thing that they can do because I'm so sorry, it is true. There is a Kardashian curse, and every single man that has gone with a Kardashian has always ended up in such bad state, okay? After the relationship is over. Like, look at this. Look at Bad Bunny and Kendall Jenner. She, he, he was on top of the world. He started dating Kendall Jenner. Now he cannot even fill a stadium. So what he had to do? Get back with Kendall Jenner, you know? I feel that as, while they are together, everything works out. But, like, don't you dare, you know, break up with a Kardashian because, bitch, your life will be over. Um. But anyways, uh, they have been seen together. They say that they're pretty much, you know, in love. Um, let me read you this. This is coming from us, U.S. Magazine. He says, Kylie and Timothy hang out with each other frequently and communicate on a regular basis. They, are, they have gone on a number of dates recently, but they always do their best to try and stay under the radar as much as possible, you know? Um... Kylie and Timothy definitely still have a connection and they really like each other and care about each other a lot. They enjoy the chemistry they have with each other. They are taking each day as it comes and just having fun. The relationship is just under the microscope because of their celebrity status. 
In recent months, the pair have been forced uh, to experience a long-distance relationship as Kylie remains in California with her children um, while Chalman traveled to New York and New Jersey to film a biopic about Bob Dylan called A Complete Unknown. I mean, I could see them together. I could 100% see them together. Although in my mind, Timothy is always like 12. But like he is always looking like so young, but like I could come, I could, I could definitely see them together, you know. And I think it's better that they keep the relationship away from the cameras because I think that's I think that's what the course activate itself when they become very public. That's where everyone has something to say, you know, and like things goes to shit after that. So I think Timothy is actually and Kylie are being very smart of like not having the relationship to be like so in front of absolutely everyone okay i don't know let me know what you guys think on the comments below all right guys that's it from the pop culture streets but don't go anywhere because now it is time for the juiciest part of the show and those are my breaking news Breaking news, everyone. I hope that you are ready because I have not one but two pieces of tea for my breaking news, okay? And those are, these are kind of like, girl, like, girl, you know? So let's start talking a little bit about the Real Housewife of Beverly Hills. This is something very quickly that just happened, yes, last night, actually. And as soon as I, as I saw this, I was like, what the F is going on over here? Now, I'm trying to do my own research, so I don't have a complete answer right now. Of course, I will give you the answer as soon as I get, you know, confirmation. But apparently, someone is doing something to our queen, Miss Kathy Hilton. Mm -hmm. Because she posted two very cryptic messages yesterday. And I don't think, I don't think that, you know, someone is behaving, all right? Kathy Hilton, she, she's on this show just to support Kyle, you know, during all of this transition without Mauricio. And she doesn't want to be part of the mess. She's not here for being messy, okay? She wants to have a good time. She wants to be funny. She wants to throw parties. You know, she doesn't want to repeat all that messness that happened with Lisa Rena and Erica Jane, right? But apparently someone is not playing nice. Mm -mm. All right. So I'm going to read you the two posts that Kathy uh, uh, put it out there. The first one said, you can't put a crown on a clown and expect a king. Mm -hmm. and the second one which is like even girl it says get rid of anyone that plays both sides no matter how much they mean to you girl. that one i was like okay someone close to kathy did something to her of course, my first thought goes to Kyle. And I will not be surprised if Kyle, I don't know, it's defending, I don't know, freaking Erica Jane against uh, Kathy or even like any other person against Kathy. Like, I will not be surprised because Kyle loves to do that. You know, like she loves to put everyone else over her family. But we don't know if that is the case, you know. Now it kind of like it kind of like giving me that sensation of like no it says no matter how much they mean to you. So this is a friend of Kathy who is don't doing something to her. Okay. Now I'm trying to think about friends of Kathy on the show. And I can of course, I mean, there is Kyle. The read was kind of like a friendly, you know. There is Sutton. Because Sutton and Kathy were actually very close, or there is even Garcelle, 
you know. Now, I do not believe that Garcelle will mess with Kathy Hilton. But Sutton on the other way, it, it will not be the first time. You remember the comments that she did last season about Miss Kathy Hilton? So I will not be surprised if it's something going around that way. Now, I hear somewhere that Kathy actually was trying to give a chance in life to Erica Jane, you know, after all the shit that went down, you know. She was not like, oh, let's be BFF and braid each other's hair. No, but like kind of like keeping it cordial and kind of like letting her in little by little after all that mess. What if Erica Jane, which also I will not be surprised if she is the one coming after, you know, our queen. Girl. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm trying to figure what is going on. I will let you know more as soon as I know more. But definitely something shady is happening in Berry Hills. And we need to, you know, protect our queen, Kathy Hilton. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below about this one. Now, I wanted to talk very quickly about the Real Housewife of Dubai because Miss Caroline Brooks is already calling someone out over racism. Okay, and I am like, oh, please do not go there. You are too early of a franchise to be getting into this mess. Okay, but right now, the, the, the conversation on Dubai is this whole drama between Caroline Brooks and Talin Marie. Okay, I knew, I'm sorry, I knew from the very beginning. You know that I'm a little bit psychic, you know, and I knew as soon as I, as I saw them, something told me Talene is going to turn on Brooks. It doesn't matter. That's her best friend. They know each other for 10 years. You know, this is my girl, my soulmate, my sister. No. Something told me as soon as this girl signed that contract, She's going to be like, fuck you, Brooks. I am going to throw you under the bus. And that's what she has been doing all of this season. Okay. Now, the weirdest part is that Talene in itself is not a bad housewife. She's actually good for the show because of her personality and what she was, has been bringing to the show. Okay. So it's very hard to like, hate on her. So I don't think I don't hate on her personality or what she is doing on the show, but throwing her friend under the bus like this so early, girl, you really wanted that gold. The, the, they, they hold gold, right? Yeah. You really wanted that gold, you know, because girl. So on the last episode, she is already talking about shit happening behind the scenes. She's already breaking that fourth wall, you know, saying like, when the cameras are down, you are calling me to talk all of this shit about Carolyn Stanbury, about every single one of these other ladies. And I think that you just want me to give you blind loyalty and you just thought that, I'm, that I was going to come here to be your little ship. And I was like, damn, Tylene, girl. I mean, look, it's not that you have to be someone's ship, but... I do believe that there should be a little bit of loyalty, you know, maybe not blind loyalty, but like a little bit of loyalty if this girl has been trying to put you on the show since the first season, okay? And she finally did it. She holds on on her part of the deal. Why are you doing this? Having Like, go after Lisa Milan. Go after Chanel Ayan. Go after any of the other girls. But like, going after your girl who put you on the show, that's savage, you know? Now, Caroline Brooks, she loved to tweet after every single episode, and she loved to put all the tea out there because she is like, no one is going to be spewing lies about me, girl, you know? So there is always a lot of things. So um, she replied to someone saying, Talin tells Brooks she feels like she instigated stuff, whatever, and Caroline Brooks says, 
Watch all the microaggressions that come out of her mouth as things continue to play out. Rage, aggressive, spiraling. This is why I said nope and left. I clocked that it was fake and I didn't want to take part in these fake scenes to give her a moment. Sorry, no. Oh, girl, you don't know, like, the kind of worms that you might open with things like this. I get it. I understand. I'm Latino, so I understand the microaggressions very well. But you are so early on this franchise. You do not want to the people, especially in social media, who get into this to get this involved because this could be bad, you know? Um, do I believe that Taling is being shady AF? Yes, okay? But I feel that when you are on reality TV, you need to like really weigh your options. Is she being an asshole? 100%. Is this good for the show? 100%, you know? And you know that I keep it real, okay? Now, if this was like very, very serious, uh, that would be a, a different conversation, right? But right now, oof, you can tell that Caroline Brooks is declaring war on Talene Marie, and this is not gonna be good, okay? This, 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 I don't think there's, there is a coming back from this. You know, I think they're gonna be moving forward into season three, and it's going to be a war, okay? Because these are two very, very opinionated, very powerful um, women, you know? But what it worries me, to be very honest with you, is that Caroline Brooks is not spending enough time making actually allies. And in Housewives, if you are going to get into a war, you need to have allies, okay? And I'm so sorry, but Chanel Ayan, Sara Almadani, Caroline Brooks, even Lisa Milan, they are not on Caroline Brooks' side, okay? Now, Talene, she, it's not like they are on Talene's side. You know, I feel that they are very much kind of like trying to decide. But for example, Talene, it's already like being a strategic and like getting close to Caroline Stambury which means Chanel Ayan is coming there as well. So she, she's playing the game. So Brooks, I have been saying this for a while. Reality TV, Real Housewives is a game, and you need to know how to play it. And it is not a game that wins the one who screams louder, okay? It, it, it's, it's won by strategizing, you know, and really doing things the right way out there. So I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. I feel that season three might be one of the best seasons, you know? And the reunion, girl, because they have not filmed the reunion. So, like, the reunion, it's going to be insane. So, anyways, um, that's it, guys. That's it for today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the show. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. Before you go, it is time to give you the vibe of the day. So, because you know that's what we do over here. Oh, it is right here. Look at this. Vibe of the day. Sometimes your prayers are answered in the form of people. Notice the angels that come into your life disguised as humans. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is out there to get you, girl. Okay? All right, guys, thank you for being here. Before you go, I want to remind you, if you want to get a personalized message from me to you, now you can book me through Cameo or to someone else. If you want to send a message to someone else, you can book me through Cameo. The link is on the description below. If you want to get your roses from Rose Forever, flowers, or all kinds of bouquets, go to roseforever.com. And don't forget to use my discount code, Andy40, and you will get $40 off your order, okay? 
Also, my merch is down here, guys. I have shirts, hoodies, a lot of fun things all related to Bravo. So go and check it out. Uh, don't forget to follow me on my social media. You can find me anywhere as Real Andy BH, Real Andy BH. And um, also go and check my other YouTube channel, Destination and This World, when I put all of my travel blogs and story time. And we have a lot of fun over there. I just dropped a video about my uh, giving my grandmother her uh, dream trip around the world, part one. So go and check it out and give grandma some love, all right? And don't forget to like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you tomorrow with another The Real Andy of Beverly Hills show. See ya! Bye!